Hey guys, Tony here, and this video is going to be the conclusion or part three of the rack rebuild where I redid my entire AV rack as well as install my brand new Crix Electra Theta HD2 power amplifiers. And specifically in this video, I'm going to give you a rundown on how I connected everything as well as show you how I configured the Denon 8500 to go from being a receiver to just becoming a processor. Now would be a great time to smash the like button for me as we get into the rack rebuild conclusion, so stay tuned. So as you can see, I've got all of my RCA cables connected, which are the pre-outs on the Denon 8500 going to the amps. And everything is nicely cable managed. Um, I do have some bars on order. I just have to get the ones that wouldn't uh, go past the, the back of the rack. Um, and then what I'm going to do is actually feed them through. But for the moment, you can see they're really nice and neatly done with Velcro. And each bundle is done in terms of which amplifier they go to. So I have the amplifiers, which I'll just aim that down now. You can see amplifier one, the top amplifier is for the LCR. So you can see this bundle here goes to the left center and right on the Denon. So then I've got the surrounds up to these fourth one, go to amp number two, and then starting with the height speakers. So I have three sets of height speakers for my object-based sound effects. And starting at this one, this is for Atmos one, and then I've got two and three down the bottom. So these are five channel amplifiers. So that's why these two are free. And on the other one, they're free as well because they are five channel amplifiers. And then down the bottom, you can see I've got my subwoofers plugged in to the Yamaha PX3. They are passive subwoofers, so they don't have power included. So the power is coming from the rack here. And then you can see the, the power down the bottom. It is actually quite neat and tidy. I don't know if that's coming across because the cables are kind of being stretched now that I've flipped the rack to the side. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take you into the home theater and I'm gonna show you how I've configured the Denon. Oh, and a side note, everything is terminated in the patch panels as well. So everything is really nice and neat. And of course, I do have my IT rack there. I'm not gonna go over it in this video, but I do have all of the gear that powers my home network and my various NAS and other devices. But that can be a subject of another video if there's any interest. So now we're sitting in the home theater and basically what we're doing is going to turn off all of the amplifiers on the inside of the receiver so that we can get the premium performance from this processor. So how we do that is we go into speakers, we go into manual setup, and then we go to amp assign. And you can also see one of the, the important things to note here is that I've got it set to pre amplifier. If I go into here, you can see that I can change it to custom, meaning that I can choose which um, amps are set that way. Um, you can see here that by putting it into pre-amplifier mode, see I can do 13.1, which means that it's basically going to use the onboard amplifiers. But by changing it over to pre-amplifier, you can see the word pre is over all of the speakers on the screen. So essentially all of the amps are being turned off. Um, and down the bottom, you can also see it says turns off all 13 internal amplifiers to use the AVR as a preamp. And that is how I've got this configured. So how I'm using my setup at the moment is using the Zadu player. And these are all my physical media that I have. Um, and essentially I've managed to copy everything from disk down using a process, which I will be showing in an up and coming video. I am planning on making that video. I have a lot of feedback from people saying they'd love to know the workflow that I use when I buy my disks and then convert them to a digital ISO and store it on my NAS, at which point they can be played through my home theater system and everything sounds exactly like it would if it was being played through a disk. So make sure you subscribe to the channel because I do have that video coming up very soon. I am just waiting on some drives to come from the United States, which are being sent to me. Um, and I will go over all of the juicy details in an up and coming video. 
Well, I'm sure the big question everyone is wanting to know is, has adding amps to my setup made a big enough difference to justify all of the effort and expense? First of all, my Crick speakers, particularly the MX-10 LCR, are very sensitive and didn't really need more power to improve the performance from that perspective. Even the surrounds and overhead speakers were sufficiently powered by the Denon 8500, and I was very happy with how things sounded before I added the amps. What I did want to improve was the clarity, especially in the vocal ranges. I noticed how much better the Anthem MRX740 was in my setup when I did a review last year. I'll drop a card up above to that video if you're interested. But it did leave me craving the potential increase in vocal performance by running the Denon 8500 in pre-pro mode. And yes, it's one of the first things that I noticed when I was testing and the vocals had a much crisper feel to them. The MX-10s can take all of that extra power as well, so it was a win-win situation. If I was to say what I noticed the most, there was a greater amount of channel separation between all of the speakers. I have 10 foot ceilings, so my overhead effects speakers generally sound pretty good as they're quite a bit away from the surrounds. But now I could really feel the difference, especially in movies like John Wick 2 in the catacombs, which is literally my benchmark movie for listening to the fine details in audio tracks, as well as A Quiet Place 2, in the prequel section at the beginning. If you want to know more about the Crix badged Electro Theater HD2 amplifiers, I will drop a card up above as I did a review previously on my channel, which was provided to me by Mick from Sydney Hi-Fi Monovale, where I went through all of the specs and my feedback after testing. The reason I didn't do any demos for this video is that it's almost impossible for me to convey and for you to hear what I'm hearing in my room. But suffice it to say, I am very happy with my decision to add the amps to my setup. So would I have upgraded to the Electras if the Denon 8500 was my end game processor? I don't think that I would have. If I didn't have plans to upgrade, I would have been very happy to keep the Denon powering my setup on its own. My setup sounded awesome before I upgraded to the Electras, but as many of you who watch my channel know, I have aspirations of owning a Trinov Altitude 16 one day. And as it's a processor only, I had to go through the process of getting the amps first. This is just the goals that I have and what I wanted to achieve on my personal home theater journey. I am a big believer in being happy with what you have if that's what you can afford and I'm proud to say that I have only ever added to my system and not upgraded or replaced gear and even the Denon will be moved to another setup eventually when I do get my hands on a Trinov Altitude 16. But for now I'm really happy to have the amps in my rack even with the Denon 8500. I have always wanted to have these specific amps ever since I saw them two years ago. I'm a pretty patient person so I was happy to save on the side and get into a position to do it, especially as I've had to save for other upgrades as well, as well as invest in my channel by buying new gear like cameras and lighting to improve the production value of my content. So guys, I hope this answers some of your questions I've seen from previous videos. And as always, if you have more questions, please feel free to drop them down below in the comments section. I read every single comment and reply to them all if I can. And if you wanted to join my community on Discord where we have a great group of home theater enthusiasts, I'll also leave a card down below to that in the description as well. That pretty much concludes the video and this series of my rack rebuild and if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful make sure you smash the like button for me and consider subscribing to see more content like this. I do have some very cool videos coming over the next few weeks that I've been secretly working on so make sure that you stick around for those as I cannot wait to share them with you. Anyway guys a very big thank you for watching but that's it for this one you'll catch me in the next one. Bye for now. So guys thanks for watching this video this is just a little bit of additional content after the main video. And I just wanted to say to everyone, thanks for sticking with me and watching this series. It isn't like my normal content where I generally will do a product review or highly script it. This has been just off the cuff and wanting to try something so that I could get content out quicker. Now it hasn't actually turned out that way and I've had a bit of a gap between videos because I've had a lot of things going on in my personal life and work and it's just been very difficult. Now I do have a studio upgrade coming where I'm going to be adding some more cameras and some things to my setup that will allow me to be able to pump out content a lot quicker, a lot of automation and things like that. So I'm really excited to do that. I know I'm not a big channel yet, but I'm kind of preparing for if that day ever comes by getting things in place now and by adding one to two videos a week, I may actually increase my reach and get more views. So I really appreciate it. Um, again, if you want to join Discord and connect with me, you can, the links are down in the description. 
drop any comments you have. And as always, thanks for watching, but you'll see me in the next video.